Russians complain that Ukrainian anti-aircraft FPV drones have become a greater threat to helicopters than anti-aircraft missiles, according to the well-known Russian war correspondent Fighter Bomber. As Defense Express writes, so far only two such attacks are known to have been successful, both in the Kursk region, where the Ukrainian armed forces are currently conducting a special operation. According to the war correspondent, Russian pilots will regularly receive reprimands for vigorous maneuvering during attacks. According to the analysts, the only reason for this may be attempts to conserve the resources of the aircraft. The issue of installing electronic warfare systems on Russian helicopters, which are actively used by ground units, was also raised. As it turns out, this task in the Russian Federation is currently being handled only at the level of enthusiasts who collective farm their products on machines at their own risk. No one in the Russian Federation is working on this topic in a centralized manner with the involvement of the relevant scientific and production capacities. At the same time, all the means available on Russian helicopters are intended to counter and warn of the threat from anti-aircraft missiles and air-to-air -air missiles, the experts explain. Thus, the L-370 Vitebsk system warns the helicopter crew about radar or laser irradiation, records the launch and approach of missiles, releases heat traps and depoles to counteract the thermal and anti-radar homing heads of missiles. However, this system cannot do anything against FPV drones. This creates a window of opportunity for Ukrainian UAVs. As added, homemade electronic warfare systems are not a panacea for aircraft, in particular helicopters. This is especially true for the Ka-52 with its vibration level. In addition, the machine itself has a number of radio systems that may begin to conflict with homemade systems. According to analysts, it will take a long time before Russian-made factory equipment appears since developing a pod in aviation is usually a long process. Moreover, when it comes to electronic warfare, this creates additional problems and risks. Considering the cost and complexity of the target, it is quite logical that anti-aircraft FPV drones may differ in the use of more expensive components and equipment. Therefore, for example, installing machine vision on them, which neutralizes electronic warfare, is an appropriate and logical solution. Therefore, the development of any means of combat in the radio spectrum may prove helpless. And thus, anti-aircraft FPV drones may well become a fairly effective means of countering helicopters. Defense Express notes, the only nuance may remain the speed. Although some drones can accelerate to 260 km an hour, for the Ka-52, this is a cruising speed with a maximum of 310 km an hour. This parameter means the possibility of an effective interception on a collision course. The parents of one of an Israeli-American hostage brought many Democratic National Convention delegates to tears as they recounted 320 days of anguish and pushed for a ceasefire deal to bring their son home. This is a political convention. But needing our only son and all of the cherished hostages home is not a political issue. It is a humanitarian issue, said John Pollan whose son Hirsch Goldberg Pollen lost part of his left arm and was kidnapped from Israel by militants who attacked the music festival he was attending. Pollen and his wife, Rachel Goldberg Pollen, were greeted with an extended ovation and chants of, bring him home, by the thousands of Democratic delegates in Chicago. There is a surplus of agony on all sides of the tragic conflict in the Middle East, he added. In a competition of pain, there are no winners. Holland called for a deal that brought all the hostages home, and he also acknowledged the suffering of Palestinian civilians in Gaza. Since Goldberg Pollen was captured, his parents have campaigned ceaselessly for his release. In addition to meeting President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, they have met Pope Francis and traveled to New York and Geneva to speak with United Nations officials. I have asked for the Vice President to call us back and tell us that the suppression of Palestinian Americans does not belong in the Democratic Party and a Palestinian speaker will speak on this stage," Uncommitted National Movement co-founder Abbas Alawi said. I'm waiting for the call.
U.S. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez called on convention organizers to make space for a Palestinian speaker.